Good morning, it is bright and early and a little bit cold. Uh, I'm talking about cold for here in Australia, so we're down into sort of the single digits, maybe 10 degrees, something like that. And single digits, nine, not 10. And as I talked about last week, um, I'm looking at resetting my Guinness World Record title for fastest marathon run in a Kung Fu uniform at the Black Horse Marathon this year. Uh, so I'm using that as an opportunity to run in long sleeves, which is ideal for winter environments. We start off the run just nowhere near as cold as if you're running without the long sleeves. The other unknown, of course, is will the Blackmores Marathon be happening? Will any events the rest of this year be happening? We don't know. It all depends on sort of how things go over the next couple of months. So the government, Australian government, has laid out sort of a plan that by July they want to have events up to like, I think it's 100 people, uh, but they haven't really said what's happening beyond that. So from July onwards, and of course there are loads of events scheduled for the second half of the year. The Sydney Morning Herald Half Marathon was delayed from the first half of the year to the second half of the year, and then you've got uh, City to Surf, which was delayed from August to October, uh, the Blackmores Marathon, uh, you've got the Western Sydney Half Ironman, the Nepean Triathlon, uh, you've got all the UTA Trail Series events. There's a load of events happening in the second half of the year. So we'll see. Do the ones that have been postponed in the second half of the year, will they just be outright cancelled? Uh, the ones that were normally scheduled for the second half of the year, will they be postponed or just outright cancelled? We don't know, because if there's still restrictions on the amount of people at an event, say like 300, maybe even if they put it up to like 1,000 people or 2,000 people at an event, that still excludes a significant amount of events. I mean, the city to surf has upwards of 85,000 people attending it. Now granted, that is one of the largest fun runs in the world, if not the largest fun run in the world, I think it was. So I guess the best uh, possibility for things to actually go ahead would be for the restrictions to relax significantly by say August. Um, August, September, October onwards. Um, and is that going to happen? We don't know. Again with all this, just we, we don't know. Uh, could people be res res relaxing restrictions a bit too soon? Yes, absolutely. Um, we're going into winter. So we're starting to relax restrictions just as we're going into winter. Could that be a bad move? Could it be a good move? Who knows? It might work out. It might be fine. We might be pretty good as a society and we might progress and this all passes by. Or we could have a second wave. And a lot of it depends on how people go about their daily business and making sure that they do the right thing. Again, I say this every week, make sure you're social distancing, make sure you're exercising responsibly when you do exercise. Try not to exercise with too many other people. Go out and do your own solo exercise, listen to a podcast, learn a new language or something like that. Maybe this time might be a good time to take up something new. Um, give something a go, have a, maybe a long-term training goal, like a two-year training goal, one and a half year training goal for when events come back into, into play. Maybe might be a good chance to take up minimal shoe running like I am and just take your time with it so that by the time you get to the events, you're nice and strong, you know, just saying. Or you can go with whatever shoe you are comfortable with and works with your body, of course. After all, these frog toe, gorilla toe shoes just aren't for everyone. So in terms of the government at the moment, they are relaxing some restrictions. Um, from this Friday onwards, they're starting a three-stage plan. Uh, so to begin with, they will start opening up small restaurants, cafes. So things like Armory Wharf Cafe, which is this one here, they'll be able to have, I think it's up to 10 people, which, yeah, 10 people isn't much, but it's something. And they'll be opening up uh, swimming pools, which I find kind of odd given we're going into winter. Um, swimming pools, a lot of them are gonna be closed, but there are the few, like where I, near where I live, Leichhardt Park Aquatic Center, which has a heated pool, which is open during the winter. Uh, so might be a really good chance to get back into swimming.
do really like running around Olympic Park here in Sydney. It's, there's so many little places that you've just never seen and so many places to explore. Like I'm in this place called the Armory at the moment um, and I just ran along sort of this mini train track, which is kind of cool in itself. Um, discovered a train station, which is actually an art gallery, and, and there's this huge field, and I'm on top of a big sort of grassy ridge at the moment. So I've got to get down there. Let's give it a go. Whoa. That was a little bit steep. I don't know what that is. Some sort of cauldron-y thing. It's not the Olympic cauldron. That's somewhere else. So I've had a half decent week this week. I did exercise most days. Ooh, pretty echoey in here. And I did miss the Wednesday, unfortunately. So I didn't actually get anything done that day. I was running Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Did Kung Fu, Friday running, Saturday running and Sunday running. And I wanna try and get to the point this week where I exercise every single day. So it doesn't matter, it's only like 2K run or something like that, as long as I'm doing something every day. And as I do so, slowly increasing the distances and intensities. And that's total distance and total intensity throughout the week. So you wanna go by what's an approximate 10% rule whether you increase 10% of intensity or 10% of distance, you do one or the other, ideally not both, so that over a longer period of time, you eventually build yourself up to being able to do the sorts of distances and intensities that you need to do in order to set a Guinness World Record title. And last year when re-going for the title of the Black Bulls Marathon, I just didn't give myself the adequate preparation period for it, unfortunately. I let myself relax just a bit too much after the Ironman. Anyway, that about does it for me this week. Thanks for watching. If you want more swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.